are getting started on building our hoop house. Yeah, we're gonna be constructing this hoop house out of chain link fence top rail. And the reason we're doing that is we are looking for a lot of strength for our snow load. And we're also looking to get a large hoop house for cheap. At our previous place, we had a 10 by 20 greenhouse that we built out of a carport. So this is gonna be a new experience for us. So today we're gonna to try to get accomplished is bending all of our hoops. We're gonna to try to get the posts that we have to pound in the ground. We have nine of those, we need to cut them all in half. And we also need to get some linseed oil put on the two by fours that are gonna be in contact with the ground. So here we go. We've got our first hoop already bent. This is the system we kind of came up with to bend them. We took this old table that we had laying around and we got our bender that we got off Amazon, bolted down to it. And then these are the guides we put on there to keep the rail up off of the table. So we get a nice even bend. And I'm gonna stick a piece of top rail in there and show you how we bend it. These benders, they come for different sizes. Our hoop house is gonna take two of these 10 and a half foot pieces of top rail. And this bender is meant to bend these two into a 12 foot wide hoop house. So when you're buying one of these, make sure you get the right size for the hoop house you're gonna build. So the first thing we are gonna do is we're gonna mark at six inches. And once we do that, I'm gonna feed it through and what that mark is, is that is where you're gonna place it right past the band. And after that, we're ready to make our first bend. And as you can see here, putting these uh, one by twos in here as kind of a level, keeps it up so it's not gonna give you a um, awkward bend in the pipe. Okay, and then you just feed it through until the bend you just made is kind of not there anymore. And this bend's pretty easy and you don't want to really muscle it too hard because you can uh, kink this pipe. And that's it, it's pretty easy to do. We have about 15 more to go. So we are gonna get started on it. Okay, so this may look like we just took apart our old trampoline, but this is gonna be the hoop house. So this next piece of pipe is a little thicker diameter than this one. These hoops are actually gonna slide into here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we wanna raise, the way this hoop house is right now, it'll only be about six feet tall, and we're aiming to get ours about eight foot tall. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these eight foot sections in half. We're gonna pound two feet into the ground, and then we're gonna leave two feet above the ground where these hoops are gonna slide into. And hopefully that'll give us our eight foot hoop house. So what we need to do, we have nine of these. We've gotta get the angle grinder out with the cutoff wheel and we gotta cut them all in half. with our bows and ground posts and I was going to get started on treating these with 
linseed oil. Linseed oil is something we recently found out about and wanted to venture into using that to treat and protect wood naturally. And we're using boiled linseed, which dries quite a bit faster. We're also making sure we do this early in the day and are gonna have plenty of sun all day and have sun for the next few days. We're ready now to put the linseed oil on. I'm gonna use a cloth. There's probably a better way to do it, but I didn't feel like buying the brush to put it on. And I'm just gonna rub it in with the cloth. And so from what I read about this is it is, I wanna say it's water resistant or it protects the wood from water over time. And I believe it also protects it from sun damage. And it's really cool, what it actually does is it absorbs into the wood over time the longer it sits there. So I was doing some reading up on linseed oil and it is derived from flaxseed, which is really cool. And that is why it is a safe alternative to use if you don't want to use pressure treated wood in your garden or your greenhouse. That's all we're gonna do today for the greenhouse since we still need to wait for the snow to melt before we can level off the ground where it's going to go. I wanted to give a special thanks to Michelle who is a subscriber who turned us on to the linseed oil and we also saw Ron on Living Off Grid McGarvey style use this not quite this way he has a better approach to treat fence posts and I would check it out if you're looking to treat fence posts but you can't afford pressure treated or you just want to try something a better alternative or a safer alternative a really cool method. So from what I've read, I think that this is going to be a good start. It's probably not ideal to have it directly on the soil and I know it will break down over time, but it was either that or not treated at all. And the linseed was very affordable and a little bit goes a long way and we have a whole big huge container to do more projects with now. Okay, so today we're actually going to start on the construction of the hoop house. We are going to kind of get this land leveled off a little bit, get some of the ice clear out of the way, and then we're going to start pounding some of these posts in the ground. We're going to do 36 feet long. We're going to put a post in every four feet. So we'll see how far we get today. I just wanted to show you guys this. We started working on our greenhouse last night and we had to kind of pause because we did have an error in some of our math. We had just kind of done it in our head and didn't really actually draw it out, which we probably should have done, but I thought this was a real, real treat just after the chicken coop build. We planned for nine posts for each side of the greenhouse or the hoop house, but when we did our math, we didn't include the last post or the first post, however you think of it. So we, last night when we were counting, we realized we were one short and then realized why we were one short. So needless to say, we made a trip to Lowe's last night so we could spend all day today working on the greenhouse. And I'm pretty confident that this will go up in two days and then we can start working on other things. Okay, so we're unloading the trailer and setting up the pipe bender again because we got one more hoop. We got a bend and then we're going to get to work. So we tried um, putting like a two by four on top of this and pounding it that way, but it was super hard to pound in and it was just breaking the two by fours we were using. So. We're just hitting this metal and it's mushroom it down. So what I'm gonna do, so we get them all pounded in, I'm just gonna go across our level, our level line and uh, mark them with the Sharpie and then cut them. And then I'll probably just grind down the edges and wrap them in some tape so they're not sharp against the plastic. But this side, almost done. We just gotta see if we can get those two end posts level, pounded in, 
and then we'll make our marks, cut them. And then to get the other side, we're going to get the diagonal measurement that we need and measure that side out and do the whole thing again over there. All right, so we got all of the posts in the ground, grinded down, cut. Everything's looking good, nice and level. And as you can see behind me, I got one of the bows up. We're gonna put all these in. We're gonna fasten them with a bunch of self-tapping screws. And then I think we're gonna start working on some wood framing for the bottom. Here we go. Okay, we got the bows up and we got all the screws in. Next thing we're gonna work on, it's called the purlin, and we're gonna use top rail for it. And it's basically the piece of top rail that's gonna connect all these down the center, all the way to the other end. And we are gonna fasten it to those using stainless steel hose clamps. So we'll see how it works. We're gonna get up there and see how strong it is, see if we need to make any adjustments. We are also going to put three support beams throughout this hoop house and we are going to be adding a wind bracing which goes on the side and I think we're going to be adding a hip board. We're not quite sure. Traditionally that's where you would put wiggle wire if you had roll up sides. We're not going to do roll up sides. It's just kind of being a little more low cost with not doing it that way. So we're still debating about the hip board. to do hip boards we are not having roll-up sides we have done quite a bit of research and are trying to make this as wind and snow stable and durable because that is what is appropriate for this climate so we're doing the hip boards and then we're gonna add some wind bracing and with the beams that are concreted in the middle along with the end walls I'm pretty sure we're gonna be more than safe for snow and wind
going to call it quits today. I think it's probably late afternoon now. We got a lot done. The wind bracing, purlins, put the bows in, the ground posts, the hip board, lots of stuff. So tomorrow we'll be doing beams, the baseboard, and working on end walls. We're happy with what we got done today and we will see you guys tomorrow. Don't show that. Are you okay? No, stop it. Please stop it. You had more pizza than me, like two slices extra. I'm hungry. And working on end walls. Let me say something more. What could I sign off with? Don't you dare. Okay, good job. Who's my belly? Who's my belly? I feel like I need to wear like a mouth cover. Oh god, this feels so dangerous. Has there been experiences of anyone snapping them? Like yeah. there has? One kid died. You can grow your own way. Grow your own way. <laughs> For some reason, I think you forget that like I'm not like you, oh and I don't have muscles like you. You forget that I'm not like you. What, a fairy? No. A princess? I worry about everything. Oh. You know, people who worry have to take their worries out on others. Uh, that's how it works. If you put two warriors together, what would happen? I, the world would end. Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs>